Hi, my name is Cassandra, and today we'll be talking about healthy ways to cope during lockdown and how to take care of your well-being. I am here with Alessandra. Hello. And we are actually both siblings. So I am the oldest. And I'm, in t- I'm the youngest. Yes, and I am in 10th grade, and she's in 6th grade. Yes. So we just thought that it would be a good idea to create this podcast for those out there, just because we have had actually a quite unique experience during lockdown. And we find that it's very important to, you know, help others cope during lockdown and especially take care of their well-being. Yeah. Um, well, first, let's start with explaining our unique little <laughs> lockdown experience. So we've actually been in lockdown for more than a year. Oh, yeah, that's actually right. Yes, we've been in lockdown since March, I think it was 20th. And yeah, it is probably. now May 3rd of oh. 2021. Wow. Yeah, so we've actually been here stuck in the UK and we haven't been able to move to Doha, Qatar, which is where we should have been a year ago, but we are still here and the restrictions just recently got off, but of course it's not fully open, it's just you can go to the mall now and you can go to pubs, but you know, you can't, (laughs) we wouldn't go to pubs, but you know, those are open, but they were closed for a very, very long time. Yeah. Um. So yeah, let's just get started on different ways we coped. Um. I actually find that attitude is key to the way you cope and the way you take care of yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking right now? What? Oh, like you be like this, like attitude is like the key. Like I'm gonna be nice, but then like one day you're sort of like. Of course. Nah. I mean. No. Nah. We nah, like no. Nah. <laughs> I mean, we all have our days where we, we, we're just so, you know, tired and we just don't want to deal with anything. But I, I definitely want to reinforce the idea that attitude is key because you can, you know, you have so much time during lockdown and you can either waste it or invest it. And I just think that it's really important that, you know, we keep that in mind because I remember at the start of lockdown, I was all like, doing routine i was working out i was doing my homework perfectly it was after two months that i started to get really bored and just not know what to do with my everyday because i wasn't going out wasn't going to the restaurants or shopping or after school activities i was just staying home right yeah and And so oh yeah because um at the very start you were like oh i don't want to become like very depressed or like all chubby Mm -hmm. Uh, and then so you just started to like work out but as you said though like because of lockdown like after those two months you started to like dial down and become like all i guess lazy (laughs) no yeah yeah and the same with me though uh uh-huh and it's just you know like i remember after a while i just didn't want to work out anymore i didn't feel any motivation I, i just lost all motivation and not even myself i could motivate myself yeah and so you know one day i just was like you know what I'm tired of just doing nothing and of course I was after some time because you know once you get into a phase where you just wake up eat in bed do work in bed do school in bed you get so comfortable in your room that just going out it's it's a no you know yeah well one one time like one day I had uh where I didn't want to prepare anything and I just did everything without thinking or having emotions I guess yeah no yeah that's just like a phase but still it's like something that happens in lockdown yeah it happens to a lot of people and honestly it is something normal but of course if it goes on for longer you know you should especially talk to someone seek help and and yeah but um i also realized that i am not gonna lie i am a very um how do you say it i love to get my work in on time and i don't i'm not behind on things but I'm such a procrastinator and lazy. <laughs> and I've always been like that even before lockdown. But now that I'm just at home all day, there's so many distractions. There's your mom in the kitchen making food. There's your sister, you know, on the other room having her, you know, Zoom call. There's the getting tired of the Zoom or you finish early and you want to watch a TV. And it ends up being one episode and then the second episode and just one more, just one more. And, you know, and then the whole day you just wasted it because <laughs> you wanted to watch your show. But do you regret it? Mm, not really. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, um, what do you think about routine? Like, what was your experience and your opinions on it? 
Um, well, I can't really say anything because I haven't really focused on my routine. Uh -huh. A lot of people around me, though, have been saying, oh, yeah, organize your routine, make it better, like, make it specific since we're, like, in lockdown. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do it. But because I'm very lazy right now, I don't really do it. Yeah. And so I guess it's not really something that I focus on. It's just that the routine that I follow every day is just go to the classroom or go to the Zoom links of the classes and then uh, find some work you need to do. And then maybe you do some work, but sometimes I do get like that big free time since I'm yeah, too the lazy. Distraction. And, th and then after like the very end of the day, I complete the rest of the work. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you. Do you think that during lockdown, the distractions increased or decreased? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, I think the distractions increased for lockdown. Okay. What do you think? Uh, well, I know both my sister watches Sunday. And I do. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she watches it all the time. But then also the same with me, though. I get distracted through all like the shows because when you're in lockdown you can't really do anything and yeah. shows are like how do you call it if you were someone that liked to play outside and have fun for example basketball tennis ball any type of sport mm -hmm. and then you have to go into lockdown which is right now and present time yeah you have to find an alternative to that well excitement and yeah. watching movies on apps such as netflix for example um it's gonna make you feel that excitement again but because it's yeah. like so good and it's like it could be like your highlight of the day or like your escape <laughs> or yeah, your escape um you're gonna use it for the whole day and then you just yeah. forget about your homework yeah i i know that especially me um i use reading as an escape from my work and when i feel really stressed out i just start reading um and i actually got back into reading during lockdown i remember before lockdown um well, actually, before we moved to Aberdeen, which was three years ago, yeah. I loved books. And then when I came here to Aberdeen, I, I stopped reading completely. Only, you know, school textbooks and stuff like that. And I don't know. I just felt like reading a page was so much effort. And now I just I've read so many books during lockdown. And I feel like that helped me cope a lot. Um, but you have to make sure that all these coping mechanisms that you have don't become too comfortable and in a way, um, it's not toxic, but it's where like you make it a distraction, but you do it every time you feel upset or stressed out or agitated that you're not dealing with your emotions. You're not letting yourself feel it. Then that's not okay. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, speaking of what you mentioned with the Netflix and the distraction, um, I actually recently got into anime last year, June, and I remember <laughs> I used to really not like anime just because I felt like a lot of the things were very stereotyped and, and sexualized, and I just didn't really like that. Oh yeah, same for me. I would say anime, and I'll be like, um, I'm okay with Naruto and yeah. shows. And um, then my friend told me, please just watch one. So I ended up watching one, and it was really good. And so now, ever since, I've been hooked on to it. But Oh, well, yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I remember at one point, I used it as an escape for my emotions, which um, is, is it's a good way to cope to a certain extent. And by me telling you guys this, it's just so you guys can understand the certain levels of coping like doing it in a certain way so for example when i felt really upset and just really stressed out in general and i wanted to cry but i couldn't i would just try and watch something sad that would make me cry but i ended up doing that a lot and it ended up me ignoring my feelings and just anytime i felt like like a millisecond of just sadness i was like oh let me distract myself let me do this and so all that emotion just pent up and continued to build up and then just one day it all came out so i really recommend that you find a coping way i mean music especially is a good way as long as it's you know you're not playing really sad and slow songs the whole day you know you cry it out you know you you breathe you drink water and then you play some upgoing music or you go back to doing your work or go out and get some fresh air 
you know that's a healthy way to cope but staying in bed all day with the lights off just listening to such sad music the whole day is definitely not a good way to cope it makes you even sadder and yeah the days pass yeah so um and yeah and even anime i ended up finding bonds <laughs> through anime and i ended up realizing how much i actually really enjoyed animation and drawing and i've created a bunch of drawings throughout lockdown and you're and mostly digital yeah it's digital and digital. painting and I, I realized actually painting for me is very soothing and peaceful and it calms me down quite a lot and i used to hate painting before but um yeah and i ended up realizing and finding out that my parents actually really like anime as well yeah. and my sister did as well after mm -hmm. a few episodes so now anime is like yeah like we all watch it on our own time but now we can all watch it as a family and that's another way that we bond with our family oh yeah i guess it's sort of like um normally we have family nights mm -hmm. and those are like where we like really connect and hang out with each other since during the week we're busy with work and um well in those like family nights we normally do we'll watch yeah. a series or a, a movie but because of anime though we we have started watching anime series or yeah. anime movies a and the way that you cope or bond with someone else does not have to be through anime that's just how we ended up using it as one of our copes and how we ended up bonding with our family a bit more and that worked for us and um I know another thing that I like to do when I'm really stressed out is, like I said, reading. I know some people who do journal and diary. Um, um, well, yeah, I, I do a journal or uh, I guess you call it a diary. Yeah. And uh, it, I guess it's sort of an escape as well. Like as you said, anime was once an escape. Yeah. And a journal is also an escape, but it's where you can put your feelings into writing or mm -hmm. text so may maybe some days you're like oh i don't want to talk to anybody about it yeah but in the journal though you can just write it down and you can just express it or sorry express it <laughs> yeah and so you can just get it out and then maybe on later days when you're like oh, okay let's see what's making me sad then mm -hmm. maybe you can just go over the journal and see oh okay yeah so i was sad this day maybe it was because of this or that Mm -hmm. yeah and i find that that's actually a very effective way me personally i rather record podcasts well not podcasts just recordings of me explaining this is how i feel and it's very agitating because i just it's so much effort for me to write down all these millions of thoughts going through my head on paper but i really do admire the ones that really you know write it down and journal it down so that can also be another way so we have reading um watching a series with your uh, family, can friends. Say my view on music. Yeah, journal, music, and yeah, what's your view on music? Um, view on music. Uh, well, eh, at the start, or actually before the pandemic, uh, I had piano lessons. But at the start of the pandemic, though, or I guess the beginning of the pandemic, uh, I stopped doing music because it was something a part of my daily routine before the pandemic. And when I started it, though, it just made me more sad. And I guess, oh, I really don't want to do it anymore since I started to become lazy. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I started online school for, well, um, ACS. Yeah. And I had music class with Mr. Devin Lai as my teacher. And that was sort of a place where I played the instrument called the ukulele. Mm -hmm. And even though I had to, it was still... Uh, fun enjoyable way and it just made me go back to music and remember yeah. how fun it was and even though yeah I don't really go I'm not really playing the piano anymore I still have that feeling where oh maybe if I continue playing then I'm gonna express more since when I listen to uh, piano music on Spotify mm -hmm. I just think oh I love your tunes I love how it takes you on a journey yeah for sure <laughs> Uh, for me, I actually started getting into lo-fi hip-hop, which is a type of genre in music, and it, it's very soothing. It helped me when I was really stressed out, and it helped me calm down my nerves. Um, it helps with my focus when I'm studying. Um, sometimes I just put it on for background noise, or to I'm having a really good day, and I put upbeat, you know? And it's, it's really helpful, and in general, music is just something so important 
during the lockdown and it's helped many people but we just have to make sure that we don't abuse all of these tools that we have to a certain level which is not healthy oh yeah uh, i forgot to mention this but uh, there's an app that we're using nowadays um it's called headspace oh yeah and you can find uh the lo- you call it lo-fi tunes or i call it lo-fi hip-hop i don't i don't i don't i personally don't use headspace but you do oh yeah it helps me a lot since uh before and i still do but uh not much anymore i used to have nightmares mm-hmm. and well now with headspace there are some programs or some videos or actually some some things to listen to like sort of like a podcast where you just listen to the person's voice mm-hmm. and you can just think oh be relaxed since they have like many different types of topics yeah. helping you with uh, stress or anger or sadness or even pain or mm-hmm. I guess numbness and maybe tiredness as well and it also helps you with those nightmares but also helps you get to sleep uh-huh. so that you have a peaceful sleep and actually there's a lot more like meditation uh, there's also some exercises and yoga actually is a very useful app Mm-hmm. yeah um and speaking of those type of apps um well it's not really related to apps but i remembered that i actually met up with a psychologist not too long ago because i had a personal project and i asked her and i said with all of the teenagers and all of your patients who you've talked to during lockdown what is a tip that you've given to them to help them not get into this dark routine of just a loop of numbness and she told me and she said use your bed only for sleeping so your bed should only be for sleeping and if you want to do work do it in an office or go do it on your desk do not do your work don't read don't eat on your bed your bed should only be used for sleeping and um yeah i'll take a note of that <laughs> yeah and on your desk that's where you do school work that's where you do your homework and if you want to read well you can go do it on in the living room or on your desk but it's very important that you only use your bed for sleeping so that you can get that really in your head that the bed is not an escape the bed is not something where we should be completely comfortable in that we don't want to leave the room yeah um and yeah no and I understand that lockdown has been very difficult, especially with not meeting people in so long. I know that I recently just went out to um, Union Square a few days ago because the restrictions were put up and we only are allowed to go to the mall and the restaurants and pubs, but you still have to, um, what's it called? You have to book and I remember that that was such a hassle when trying to get an appointment for a haircut or having to go eat a restaurant because it it was packed everything was packed since we've had that restriction for I think six months or a little more than six months now and um, I definitely have developed some social anxiety over lockdown which I'm trying to get over and um that is completely normal especially because we're isolated from people we're social distancing and in our case we have a different timetable from the people here because we're doing school with people in doha and they're at first they were three hours ahead so we would have school at 4 30 in the morning oh, yeah that was a hassle oh, yeah <laughs> i hated that time because you have to wake up so early and i guess well, we still, I guess, slept at eight. Like when we were. You would to try to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then we. Even, like, and having to, to change the sleep routine was very hard. And then just recently, it went to two hours. So now we wake up at um. Seven. No, we wake up at five thirty, and then just a few weeks ago they changed oh. it because of Ramadan. Oh yeah. And so now we wake up at like six and start school at seven. So the constant change in timetable and everything has been such a difficulty and i know that other people have had the same issue with their sleeping schedule whether they're in our position or not and um you know creating social anxiety or overthinking 
or becoming really tired when you go out and socialize for too long, you know, and that is, I just wanted to say that that's completely normal and we just have to make sure that we don't get comfortable with it and that we try and, you know, get out of it and just slowly but surely better it so that we're not as nervous. Yeah, that's important to remember. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to reinforce drink water and eat the three meals in a day. Please, it's very, very important because we are inside all day. So not only are we not getting vitamin D, but it's very, very easy to forget about your water. And um, sometimes people actually don't have an appetite anymore, which is normal. But make sure to eat your breakfast and dinner especially and eat your lunch. You don't have to have snacks in between, but don't have, let's say, a Pop-Tart and say that's your breakfast. Yeah, that would, you know? that would be a bad breakfast. <laughs> yeah. So please, please remember, make sure to drink water. And it all depends on how old you are and your height and everything and the amount of water that you need. Yeah. But drink that amount of water every day. Trust me, it'll help you with your skin. It'll help you with your energy levels. Overall, your whole body inside. And it'll also just keep you refreshed. And, you know, you won't feel so drained and fatigued all the time because you're drinking water. Especially with the meals as well. Make sure you're getting all the nutrients, proteins, and everything that you need to go on with the day. Yeah. And, um, you know, just yeah. take care of yourself in general. And I understand that it's very hard, especially with having to keep a routine, like washing your face every day, brushing your teeth. And I know it's hard because I've we've been through it. But I just, as someone who's gone through that and is currently going through it as well, it's very important, you know, to shower as well. Take care of your body and just take care of your routine and everything. And remember the attitude. Even if you feel like lockdown's never going to end, just think, you know what? Okay, today, let's take care of myself. Yeah, change it for the better. Yeah, because remember, we can either waste or invest it. So... Good quote. <laughs> thank you. But, yeah, so... Me and Alessandra really understand that it's very hard and we just want to say that you guys are doing great and that we really hope that you continue to do better and just, you know, keep up with your school, keep up with taking your well-being because really in the end, you are where you start when you want to take care of yourself. Yeah. Not someone else. It starts all from you. Yeah. You want to make sure that when you end the day, you can just lay in your bed and think, this was a good day. Mm -hmm. This was a day that I could say, yes, finally, I have, uh, I guess. I did something. Even yeah. if it's one little thing, like, I picked up my room today. That is more than an accomplishment. And slowly but surely, we will pick up the achievements and they'll get bigger and bigger. Yes, correct. <laughs> so that is the end of the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Um, once again, thank you, Alessandra, for joining this conversation. You're welcome. And I really hope that you guys stay safe during lockdown and continue to thrive. Bye. Bye.